number five, we have Jason Jelicic with his speech titled <laughs> Patterns. With his speech titled <laughs> Jason Jelicic. <laughs> Picture this. It's a beautiful, fresh Sydney afternoon and you're striding your way confidently down the street on your way to an important meeting. The afternoon sun's warming your skin. You've even got a slight skip in your step, thanks to the black eyed peas playing on the iPod. Then suddenly, you freeze. In a split second, you realise something is terribly wrong. And before you can even look down, your nostrils confirm it. Yep, you've just been there. <laughs> what are you going to do now? Are you going to curse those wretched, irresponsible dog owners who let their furry friends answer the call and then leave behind their calling card? <laughs> Are you going to blame yourself for having your head so far up in the clouds that you wouldn't even look in what was sitting on the ground right in front of you? Or are you going to just accept it, clean it off, and move on? Madam Toastmaster, members and guests, I think that we all step in once in a while. And my talk today, I'm going to suggest that it's not stepping in that counts, but it's how we deal with it. You see, I know a thing or two about doggy doo. <laughs> it all started way back when I met my lovely wife, Helen. Now she said to me, I've always wanted a dog, so promise me when we have the room, we can get a dog. And I, who was I to argue? What she neglected to tell me, of course, was this dog happened to be a Saint Bernard. <laughs> you know, like that perennial dribbler out of Beethoven. Well, we ended up picking up this beautiful eight-week-old short, short coat uh, St. Bernard puppy named Madison. She was 15 kilos when we picked her up, and within one year, she was 60 kilos. <laughs> and with big dogs come big responsibility. <laughs> the routine went something like this. At the start of the day, pick up a big giant bag of pedigree pal and fill up a huge bowl. At the end of the day, in the evening, pick it up again. <laughs> With a bit of cuddling and walking in between. Now eventually we decided that Maddie was getting a bit lonely so we thought we'd get a, a second dog and this time it was a Rottweiler cross named Tizer. Now we had two hungry and hairy mouths to feed and to pick up after. My backyard was starting to look like I was at war with the Taliban. There were landmines everywhere. And if I wasn't careful, I might step in it. But as the saying goes, you know, after you have dogs, then you have kids. And eventually I ended up with two boys under two years old. It's fair to say our lives were rather hectic. I remember one night coming home from work. Came in the door and I had pretty stressed. And then I looked at my wife and I instantly knew she was pretty stressed as well. She was ready to flick past the kids to me, pour herself a big glass of red and just zone out on the couch for a while. And fair enough too. So I finished playing with the kids and I thought I might get a drink myself. I walked into the kitchen and I noticed there were some dishes left behind from the night before still in the sink. And in a terrible moment where my mouth was doing overtime, when my brain had actually checked out for the evening, I said, geez babe, the kitchen's a bit of a mess. What have you been doing all day? Oh. The silence was deafening. When I walked back into the lounge room, she let me have it with both barrels. What do you mean, what have I been doing all day? I've been looking after your kids, cleaning your kids' clothes, taking your kids to the park. Thankfully, my brain engaged long enough for me not to say, hey, they're your kids as well. <laughs> Well, it's fair to say that marriage is all about shared responsibilities. And what I was determined to do the next night was to come home and actually make a good impression. So this night I came home and sure enough there were some dishes still left over. So what did I do? I rolled up my sleeves, walked up to the sink and started washing. Then I hear, what are you doing in there? Washing the dishes, babe. Why? Because uh, they're dirty. <laughs> Not trying to make me feel guilty, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, the, fair, the, the thing to be fair is I had to learn to do my share of the dishes. I had to learn to do my share of the cleaning. I had to learn to do my share of the picking up duties. And that was to be sorely tested one day, a couple of months later, on a stinking hot summer's day. 
we were walking our dogs down the promenade from Tamarama to Bondi when suddenly I felt a pull on the check chain. I turned around to see Maddie assuming the position while uh, people scurried around her on the narrow pathway. I looked at my wife with trepidation and she just gave me one of those knowing looks saying, listen Buster, whatever happens from now on is your responsibility because I did the last one. <laughs> and it got worse. It looked like Maddie had a bit of an upset tummy. <laughs> I was going to have to call the fire brigade for this one, I'm sure. Anyway, I was armed with this pathetic little plastic bag. But phasing the onlookers out from my mind, I positioned myself. With one gl smooth gliding mo motion, I went over the top, underneath, pulled the ends together, tied it up, and fluidly lobbed it into the nearby bin. The onlookers faded into the background. The dogs moved up the path. My wife just looked at me and said, geez, Jay, I'm glad that was you and not me. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> you see, it doesn't matter how prepared you are. It doesn't matter how saintly you are. At some point, you're going to step in it. <laughs> you can't see it coming. And you certainly won't know how difficult it's going to be to clean up. Sometimes you might even feel like you're surrounded in it. <laughs> but you can't just stand there, can you? you? You've got to do something. You've got to take control and take action. Don't bother cursing at the universe. Don't bother blaming yourself. Do something about it. The next night I came home. And I went into the kitchen. And the kitchen was sparkling. All the dishes were put away. I walked out the lounge room and I saw my wife. I caught her eye, she smiled at me. And I couldn't help smile back. <laughs> you know, it's true what they say. Sometimes <coughs> happens. But it's how you deal with it that counts. 